So we're going to take a look at different kinds of tessellations and understand how we can use a base mesh, a very interesting and rotated component to get some quite easy to use Daggrid forms. Okay, so here we have an example of a base mesh and this is the panel that we're going to use. So putting this base mesh with this panel with the tissue add-on, we get this kind of tessellation. So what happens if we want to create this kind of tessellation on a diagonal with a daggrid? Sure, we can think about how we create our base object first, but there should be a fairly easy way to do that, right? So it turns out it is not so easy, but also not terribly hard. Before we get to that, let's go to the default. So if we grab this mesh, in fact, let's just create a new one. So let's create a plane, go into edit mode, move a vertex or an edge up, move that, create a loop cut. Let's move an angle. Now let's add subdivision surface with a boundary smooth, keep corners. And let's change the levels to something like three. I'm just going to pull a corner so it's a little bit more interesting. And now let's grab this panel. So I'm just going to duplicate it here, Shift D. And with tissue, let's select first our component, then the base mesh, and then tessellate. Enable merge. And that's the result that we get, which is pretty much exactly what we would expect. This is a directional component, so we want the direction to be maintained. From that point on, you might be thinking that if you use decimate and the unsubdivide option might produce equally easy to achieve good looking results. So let's check it out now with this mesh here. And that's what we get, which for the most part seems correct. However, the issue with this kind of tessellation is that we end up with triangular faces. So those triangular faces, they cannot be determined in the same way that we can determine everything else. And also, if we notice on this mesh over here, you notice that these faces, they're not triangular, they're rectilinear, but they kind of figure out their own direction. So I'm gonna save you the time, but I have done a series of tests with different kinds of rotation options in tissue because tissue does have quite a few different rotation options. So if we select a tessellation, go to the object data properties, find the tissue tessellate tab, expand it, and then we go all the way down to rotation, which is a sub tab and expand that. So you can see this one here uses the default rotation type. This one here uses an active UV. I have UV unmapped that, however, it still gives us challenges. And then there's also another even more advanced option, which is to use a weight gradient. And this gives us the most correct version. However, we do also have an issue. And you can see it right here that we have triangles everywhere. So in no way what possible are these going to be correct. So back to the drawing boards. What if we actually rotate our panel? If we start with an original panel, then we think about rotating it and extending it. And then we add a cube in there and put in only the difference. Then if we look at it from a top view, we still have something that looks fairly rectilinear, but has a 45 degree directionality. So how do we determine whether this panel would actually be useful for what we are doing or not? We can select the panel and try to create an array. In fact, I even have one here. And if the array works, that means that this panel can be tessellated just as easily because an array is just a simple tessellation when you think about it. Now I scaled this Boolean by eyeing it and looking whether we get the edges to be fairly close to where they should be. So once we have this, let's try it out again, just so you can see exactly what's going on, is I'm going to select this component, shift select this base mesh and tessellate. So we now have a really nice end directional tessellation. And the nice thing about all of this is that it's actually buildable, right? So we have all these panels, which you can imagine that's one buildable panel. So that works in some respects, but sometimes it's actually nice to have the diagonal topology. In other words, that we have selectable loops in either direction. Having that kind of topology axis allows us to do further subdivisions or anything else that we want to do mesh afterwards. So how can we get that? Here is this same example but with the boolean applied. 
Why do we need to apply the Boolean? Because we need to select all the edges, so all the external edges here, right click and click on Mark Seam. So we have an example here. If I go to the tessellation settings, there is an option to merge and dissolve seams. So this option dissolves anything that's marked as a seam. So if I go back in here, select everything and clear seam, go into this tessellation and click on refresh. Now, even though we have that option checked, you see that nothing is dissolving. If we go back now into our component, alt click twice to select all these edges, right click and mark seam. Now go to the tessellation that's using that panel and click on refresh. And you see that all those seams, they nicely go away for us. However, we still have one kind of issue. And the issue is that we've dissolved everything, but now we have straight edges all the way from the top to the bottom. So that's changing our topology a bit more than what it should. So how can we resolve that? This video is sponsored by my patrons. Thank you guys so much for continuing to sponsor the UH Studio Academy channel so I'm able to produce content like this. Besides the support that I get from the patrons, if you do become a patron, you can expect regular in-depth guides about workflows that are shown in these YouTube videos. We also have basic files that are provided and more advanced files for the higher tiers. So if you like the work that we are doing here at UH Studio Academy, then consider becoming a patron. The link is in the description below. If we now go to the next example here, it's by adding an extra loop in the opposite directional section. And how do we do that easiest? So I'm going to duplicate this here. Let's go to top view, go into edit mode, and we're going to use the knife tool. Now we want to check a couple of options here. And remember there's options everywhere. And we want this to use x-ray. And I think maybe that's default now. So to use it, we click on an edge or fairly close to it and it should snap. And then we click on the other edge and then press enter. So now we have that extra edge and that's exactly what this here is showing. So let's try it again. So with this element that we subdivided and I'm going to duplicate this tessellation. Let's go into tessellation settings and swap out our component with this component here. And now we have a perfectly perfect grid. It's, a, it's amazing. It's actually the best way to get a, a diagrid. So we can select faces in either direction and also in those directions. From that point on, we can take it even further. Like we can think about maybe using different kinds of components. Like here's one that has a few more subdivisions and they're at different levels. So the, the tessellation looks a little bit more interesting. And now that we have the power of this knowledge, we can also go and think about larger massings, right? So here's an example of a building massing. And here's our first initial panel, which is this panel over here. And then we have our diagrid panels. So we have this really interesting topology that's fairly easy to get. And it's all completely parametric. So I can go and I can adjust one of these edges into any way that I want. I think I'm dragging here the wrong one. Let's drag this edge right here. Let's click on this tessellation and click refresh. And now we get our lovely squeezed <laughs> building. Looks very squeezed, All right? Now if I disable the wireframe so we can just see what the resulting topology is, it looks very clean, it looks super clean. So and that's how these are made. And that's with the variation panel that we've got. And then a few more variations of something that uh, looks very sculptural here. And in fact, I really liked this object and I will show you how we can, with just two lights, one light on top and one on the side here, make this look really beautiful. So if I turn the sun off and you see we have this really interesting light. That's quite dramatic in a way, isn't it? It really accents the shape of it and first off how it bends and then the bridges that we have created with it. Thanks for watching this and the files and a further explanation is available on Patreon with the link below in the description. Now if you're wondering more about tissue, check out this video over here and let me know what you think about it. Or if you have any other comments about tessellations or shapes that you would like to see, 
happy and quite open to it.